Lastly, we have the fourth case where we have indefinite solution. <laughs> Indefinite means under constraint. And as a comparison, no solution means over constraint. So what does indefinite solution situation look like? Um, it can be something like this. Again, we use x1 and x2 since we are so familiar with it. The, the, the situation is that uh, the profit, the objective function, can continuously be optimized towards infinity. And that's the reason why there is no definite solution. So for example, we say there is non-negativity constraints, right? So, so far, so good. And then we say, um, okay, don't make more than that number of tables all right uh you must have at least this combination and then you must have uh, that kind of requirement all right and uh, you must have at least this number of deliveries and then it's looking at the clock 5 p.m end of work day meeting over dismiss we'll continue tomorrow bye bye and so the meeting dismisses and then the third shift people came in and look at the meeting results. Oh, that is what you came up with, right? Okay, nice. Let's solve it. So when they solve it, the objective function line was drawn. Then we say, can you get a higher profit? Yes. So can you get higher profit? Yes, because we can keep moving to the right, right? And you get the idea because there's no right end to it. You can always get higher profit. In fact, you can get infinite profit by moving the line infinitely to the right. So this is a case of under constraint model where the feasible region is not closed. So the feasible region is open towards infinity. That doesn't contradict anything because we never say that the feasible region has to be finitely or has to be finite, has to be closed, has to be um, not having a gap, so to speak. Uh, and therefore, we, we, when we solve this, solver will keep chasing the objective function line, so to speak, towards infinity, because there is always another point that gives us highest profit, higher than the previous uh, profit found. And so solver or any software, when they run this, they will not stop. They will spin and spin until a predefined timeout is exceeded. For example, 10 seconds. And after that, solver will still come back with no solution and say timeout error or cannot find solution due to uh, exceeding limits, you know, something like that. So it's a different kind of error where it signals the fact that it is in unable. All right, the, 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 the result is incomplete. It is unable to reach um, optimality within the bounds, the time boundary that is given. Okay, so that's it. These are the four categories. Now for indefinite solutions, I gave the uh, little bit of a joke that uh, it's 5 p.m. so people quit and uh, you know, so they are left with a, a, an incomplete uh, discussion of the situation of the company. And that doesn't sound so, so uh, comical uh, in real life because that can happen. You can have all kinds of constraints talking about this and that, but then forget or didn't close the feasible region, right? So it is underdefined. And in such a case, uh, the, the underlying uh, DNA of the problem is open-ended. So don't expect any solution to come out. Okay, so now that we are armed with the knowledge that that's it, these are the four possible scenarios and no other scenarios can happen to any kind of uh, large or small LP model, then it gives us the power to know that um, we know what to do, right? Maybe we check that our model is right. We will be proceeding with it more carefully. Maybe we realize that um, we have over-demanded 
the situation. For example, we, we asked too much. We gave too many constraints. Maybe we realize that um, we haven't really given any concrete constraint. And when we found solutions, we need to be careful whether we are in a situation of infinite solutions or optimal, single, unique, optimal solution. And uh, unfortunately, solver, Excel solver at least, doesn't tell us which situation we are in for one and three. So it will still come back with one solution, even in the case of infinite solutions. And which point it gives depends very much on its internal calculations, uh, a bit random here, so we cannot tell. So in other words, if we are in this situation, we have to go back and check the gradient of our objective function with the gradients of the constraint um, lines and see if it is a multiple of the constraint line uh, gradient. So 3, 4 here can be, if, if it is 3, 4, then it's clear, but it can also be 6, 8. It can also be minus 3, minus 4. It can also be 30, 40. So long as it's a constant multiple of the gradient, and that will give us the potential show situation of infinite solutions. Of course, if it is a constant multiple of a, a constraint that is uh, not touching the optimal solution, say for example, we have another line here, a bit tilted, but you know, objective function line, of, or maybe we have another constraint that is here. All right. So it's parallel to our current five, two constraints, uh, coefficients. But that doesn't matter because we are heading to the right and we never touch the left, right? So, so it doesn't mean that the that if the gradient of the objective function line is a multiple of the constraint line, then immediately we have an infinite situation. So there are a few cases to check and this and that. And it would be nice if solver can actually do all this, but we just have to wait and see. Okay, great. So that will conclude our discussion of graphical solution uh, method for LP uh, models.